So, um, you ever thought of coming up with a solo album? Yeah. yeah, I've always always wanted to do a, a solo album a long time ago, but I always had always had um, a lot of things to do with Queen uh, in the past years, and I always because I mean you must remember most of um, nearly all of Queen albums are like mini solo projects anyway, and and what happens is that we the four of us write individually. And then we have like three or four songs on an album, and we just, they're like our solo projects. Whoever writes takes over the whole thing. So, so I mean, they've been like solo projects for me anyway. But then finally, I decided that I should do songs that were entirely mine, and, and make a whole album with just Freddie Mercury songs. So basically, this album could be called Freddie Mercury songs, really, but I mean, it's called Mr. Bad Guy. And, um, and it's taken me this long, because I wasn't quite ready to actually do it, and I found enough time for me to actually work properly on, on the songs that I wanted to do. まあ、今一番いい時期だったと思ったし、だいたい今まであの、今回のレコーディングのスタッフのね、人選というのはどういうふうに決めたんでしょう? How did you select the members? Well, see, initially, I had an idea that I wanted all kinds of sort of famous people to appear on it. Like I have been working with Michael Jackson for a while, and at the time when I was working with him, he said that he would appear on on one of my tracks. So I had an idea that maybe I could get certain you know musicians. I mean. Successful musicians to actually appear on it, but then it, it got too late, and by the time I actually got into recording, I found that I was doing it all myself, and then I turned the other way, and I just said I want to do it completely myself, and so basically the musicians I've actually used are very good, but they're they're sort of German sort of session musicians, who um who are very good in their own right, and uh, but they're not uh, as famous as Michael Jackson or Rod Stewart or people like that, but I'm glad I did that because in the end I think that's that's the best way that I could come up with my first solo album. That's basically just all me, and um, I haven't got any um, a thing like well, where people would regard me as saying, uh, thinking that I actually employed um, celebrities to actually help me actually work on the solo album. So it's basically just me, and I like it that way. で、最初あの結構有名なね、例えばマイケル・ジャクソンとか、あの、ロジャーとか、その辺の有名な人をこう、あの、入れてでやろうと思ってたんですけれども、まあ、時間的なものと、その、それぞれのスケジュールのものと
Roger the drummer, was actually the first one to actually um, do a solo album. And the moment that happened, they think, are there any rumors of us breaking up? But I mean, if we break up, I mean, we'll break up. I mean, and, and, and then press will not. But I think the press always want to be the first ones to know. No, in fact, I think my solo album has actually brought all of us together more than anything. Yes, because I mean, it, because of these rumors and things like that, you know, it, it takes some. Um, Sometimes it, it, it's nice to actually sort of break away from a group that, that's actually been going for so long, meaning staying away. And once you stay away and somebody's done a project on, on their own, it, it seems like you either either break away or you come closer together. It's, it's not, so in a, in a funny way, when we come back together, we, we now have a, a sort of different kind of intensity. And, and that's good because, I mean, of course, the, the breakup rumors are always around and, and you either sort of, your egos either take you away from all that and you break up, or they bring you closer together and just say, look, you know, we're not breaking up. And at the moment, to be very honest, I mean, we're very sort of together. And we sort of, um, of course, they're very aware that myself, you know, I've got a very good deal with CBS and, and, and my solo album is taking off and it's doing, my, my solo single is doing very well. But, you know, whether they like it or not, they still, you know, they have to accept the fact that, that I'm still their singer. But, I mean, Having actually said that, maybe two weeks later we might break up. But I mean, the moment we're very, very together. Oh, that said something. But you see, that there, there also is, there is an inward jealousy. I mean, that would happen anyway. Like, and they're all wondering and all waiting to see if, if, say, my album is going to do better than the last Queen album or something like that. Which is a good challenge to have anyway. And like, in a way that if my album does do better than the last Queen album, then the next Queen album will have to be even better. So basically, we are sort of stay together. And then there is a, a sort of standard that we're sort of keeping up. And I would love my album to be better than the last Queen album, because that will set a precedent. And then uh, the next Queen album, we're going to say, it had better be better than, than Freddie Mercury's solo album, if, they, if we're still together. So, I mean, I think we're in a way in a sort of, sort of competition, which is great. We've always been in competition within ourselves from the start because we like we write um, um, solo uh, little solo projects. We write our own songs, and there is an inward jealousy all the way through our history, you know, and that's what Queen albums are, have been made of. And there's this push, and there's this hunger, and there's this sort of fight to get the best songs out. And uh, there's no way I was going to actually make a solo album of the leftover songs. From Queen. I mean, my solo album is my best songs for the time. How many get that? あの、前作のワークスという he, he feels that last Queen's album, the um, it seems like everybody had about equal percentage of writing. Almost. I had more than most of them. Hmm. Um, but, but very equal. It's going to the stage. Wait, intentional. Yes. Intentional. Yes, well, see, I, I've, I've actually been the main writer from the start. I mean, Brian and I have been the main songwriters. Like, if you go back to the very early days, I mean, John didn't write at all. And Roger didn't write at all, and, and, and Brian and I virtually took up 50% of the songwriting. So, I mean, we have sort of grown up as being the two main writers. And now the others have 
start writing and we encourage them as well. And But I don't think there's ever been an album where it's completely equal writing status. I mean, the last album has come very close. I mean, I think the last album consisted of me writing three and a half, Brian writing two and a half, and the other two, I forget, anyway. But um, I think maybe the next album we should really go completely even and, and maybe write three songs each, so there'll be like, you know, 12 songs on the album. I think the time has come where we actually, in songwriting, we actually completely even. それはあのね、今まで彼がその中心的なほとんどそのバンドの半分ぐらいを占めてた位置があったと思うんですけれども、それをこう意図的に自分自身で弾いてって他の人にバーを与えたしたっていうそういうことなんでしょうか。Is it like is it intentional that uh, you used to have more it's not quite true. I mean, I think what, what, every album that, that's ever come out of Queen, we, we come out with a batch of songs and we really pick the best. And if I have songs that I, I feel are better than somebody else's, if I have five songs that are better than one of Roger's songs, I'll say we won't have his one song. Like I remember that Roger actually wrote about three or four songs and as far as I was concerned, some of them weren't, weren't uh, good enough and I just said go back and write some more. And things like that. So I mean, but some, you know, then Roger will come up with something like Radio Gaga, and it's it's, it's perfect. It, it's wonderful. And then I do encourage them. So I mean, I'm not trying to hog a Queen album in any way, but I mean, I, in a funny way, that makes them write better songs, you know. And that doesn't mean I write the best songs because I mean their, their songs are hits. I mean, it just means that in a funny way, if they come up with a very good song, then I have to make sure that I write a good song. But it's just that they do look upon me uh, as the chief songwriter because I have written all the songs from, you know, from day one. And so, I mean, Brian has his workload and I have my workload and uh, Brian and I are the principal writers and I think John and Roger are coming into their own. So I guess on the next album it will be four principal writers, which I'd love to, I'd love to hear. Mm. You understood that, huh? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ルーティンがそのリーダーシップを発揮するにくいが、だんだんいなくなると、そういう風に民主的にしていくとね、ちょっとバンド内でやりにくくなっていくことってないんですか？会議室の。そのバンド運営に関して。あ、if you make it, there is, because I think there's no way you can actually tell that you don't write a better song than me, if you know what I mean. Because in the end, I mean, even I, I could actually say to somebody, that song is not as good as mine, but it's up to the public in the end. But the only way you, you, you realize that it's going to be a good song or received properly is to actually release it, and then it's, then it's too late. So, I mean, I don't, I think in the end, we just, it's a consensus of opinion between the four of us. The four of us ha have to actually just fight it out. And, and in the end, just say this is what the Queen album. Even then, it, it might not be good, but it's just within us. We have to sort of come up with. Uh, there, there, there are times where we fight numerous. Where Roger would say, "Look, I love this song that you've written," meaning me, but it's not on the album. And I say, "Look, there's no room. Why don't you get rid of one of your songs?" And then I'll put it on, and that doesn't work. You see, so I mean, it, but diplomacy is, is something. I mean, I, I, you know, and in one way that's quite nice because. Um, in a funny way, having done my solo album is, is, is now giving them more room to actually write more for themselves because, I mean, um, in a way, I mean, before I did my solo album, I was sort of very involved with Queen and I wanted all my output to come out through Queen. Now that my solo album has come out, I've sort of actually channeled all my energies into my solo album and so now I think there's a, a little breathing space where everybody else can come into their own. So I think it would be good. That, that's another way of saying that we can come together. I'm actually sort of allowed a breathing space, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna be so greedy as I was before because I'm gonna say fine. You know, I've got my solo album already out, and we can all write um, equal. And um, there you have it. Mm -hmm. あの、
自分のソロがあるから、うん、いいやっていう部分が結構あって、うん、ソロの方にエネルギーを注げばいいんだっていう、うん、そういう考えがあるから、うん、みんなそれはあるわけですねそれぞれソロを出す人もね,、うん、ねそういう意味で結構きき何て言うかうまくいくんじゃないかなっていう。とということはソロかあのソロ活動をそれぞれするということはバンドに対する欲求不満が高まってるみたいなことの証しなんでしょうかあうちは、例えば、人たちのメンバーが、クイーンメンバーが、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、みんなのソロアルバム、I can't, I can't oh, I'm trying to work that out. It sounds like traffic out, taking the circus. I mean, let me have a look. Try it again, girl. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't understand that at all. You see, when, when you said that you came out with s o l o album, you had a breathing space, and you were、yes. like, yeah. putting. No, I, I was talking about that from my point of view. Right. It was、yeah. like something、um, like I felt, yes, in a, way, in a way, maybe I've made a breathing space for everybody because I, I've, I've sort of. Suddenly come up with a solo album, and that, that sort of means that I'm not going to be hungry as much on the next Queen album. So maybe they'll, they'll have more space to actually, actually work on the next Queen album. Would you, would you say that you were not satisfied with only doing work for Queen? No,、Where、but I, I would put it that but there's another way of putting it is that maybe I had a lot more songs that I wanted to put on Queen albums. But because of the d- diplomatic factor, I wanted to make sure. Because I mean, I think that in the end,、uh, the public that buy Queen records w a n t to have to listen to all us, all of us, all four of us actually write the songs. And so, I mean, I, I think there was a time where I, I remember John actually saying to me that he's, he's quite willing to, to let me write all the songs on Queen. But、um, I wasn't prepared to do that because then that would be a solo. A Freddie Mercury solo album within Queen.、Uh, my solo album should be outside Queen for me. And、um, I was not prepared to do that. So basically, I think, I think、um, over the years, now that the other members have got, and like, when I say other members, I think John and Roger have sort of become their own writers in their own, in their own right. And、um, I'd like them to write more and more because that sort of enhances Queen product anyway. だからクイーンに対する欲求不満というよりも欲求不満というふうに言われてるんですよ、ね。はい、じゃあすみません、ちょっとテクチェンジテイ。じゃあちょっと話題を変えましょう。あ、いいですか。わかりました。ファンがいきます。え、OK、あんなくにちょっとちょっとジャケットを持ってください。もうよく聞いてますから。わかりました。Because of that, yeah, it takes up time. Because you can always do it later. 安心しましょう。いや、だるくいるフローイングです。So,、uh, going away from the subject of、uh, Queen. Is this on? Because they're not on. They're on the same thing, because they're all about it. 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 だからそういう流行とかね、周りの状況とかに左右されずに作るんだという方針が最初から決まっていたんですか、ね I'm aware of what goes on, but I still write a song the way I feel it. And if it, if it means that a song that I like needs something that's old fashioned, I will still do it. Because I mean, I never let a song down. I mean, a song comes first. And so, I mean, that's why I've done something like、um, okay, there's, there's a track called、um, Living on My Own, which is called Scat Singing, which is something that, say, Ella Fitzgerald did a long time ago. But I wanted to do that, and it's not the current trend at the moment. but... Maybe you can set a trend, you know. I mean, a rock and roll artist has never done scat singing in that way because it's not allowed or it's not appreciated that way. But I'm not worried about that. I mean, if a song needs that, and I want to showcase my sort of vocal ability on, on that track, and that's what I was doing. So basically, I mean, I do whatever I like, but I'm aware of what goes on. 
but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to pinch it or say that that's exactly what I should do. But I'm aware. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bad Guy is a song. This is a song of I. It's a song of I. It's a song of I. えー、そういうふうに書かれた詩を読むと思わずその深読みしてしまうわけなんですけども、えー、その中でねやっぱり、えー、これ深読みしてしまうと、えー、その他人が自分に対して思ってるようなことをパロディとして、えー、出してみたというそういう意図がありました Yes, because I, I say I'm Mr. Bad Guy, I'm Mr. Mercury. It just means it's all coming from here. I'm singing it, you know. And、um, people can take it any way they want. People can take it and relate to it in any way they want. I hate, to be honest, in, in, even in interviews or even in sort of any kind of chat shows or whatever, I hate actually trying to analyze my songs to the fore. It's like people still ask me what Bohemian Rhapsody is about, and I say, I don't know. Because I think it, 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 it loses the myth and it, it sort of, it, it actually sort of、um, ruins a, a kind of、um, imagination or whatever, or something that people have built up. And I will say as much as I can about certain songs I write, but in the end I don't like to analyze it. Because I don't analyze songs myself. I, mean, I just sing them, I write them, and then I record them and produce them. And then it's up to the individual buyer to actually buy it the way that he or she feels it. Because you know? otherwise I ruin. I ruin a kind of mystique that, that, that might portray that track. So I hate doing that.、And、as far as Mr. Bad Guy is concerned, it is to do with me. But I mean, I can be Mr. Bad Guy in very different ways to a lot of people.、Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say what Mr. Bad Guy exactly means. All I can say is Mr. Bad Guy is me, and then they can take it from there. Just a ああ結局ですね、自分の詩っていうのはあんまりね、あのー、こう分析するのは嫌いなんですよ。と、うん、いうのは、自分、人に想像してもらいたいと。うん、はい。ああ、ね、えっ、ー、と、えー、あなたはその、真面目なメッセージソング、世の中を変えるような、すごくシリアスなメッセージソングを作ろうと思えば、多分作れる。自分の曲をですね、エンターテインメントとかファンタジーとかっていう、そういう作り方のその一つの決まりみたいなものをちゃんと持ってて、そこからはみ出さないようにしてるっていう感じがするんですけれども、あえてそういうその真剣な、辛辣なメッセージソングというか、カリスマになるような、そういうシリアスな曲を作っていかないのはなぜなんでしょう、um, You probably have the time to write any song you can, and probably some serious, very like, message songs. But、uh, do you deliberately not stay away from, from those?、Right? That's very true. I, I, don't, I don't like to write message songs because I'm not sort of politically orientated. I'm not, I'm not like a John Lennon or a Stevie Wonder. I just feel that I like my songs are just basically commercial love songs. And I like to put my emotional, my emo- emotional talents into that. I don't want to change the world. I don't want to. Talk about peace or any, any kind of sort of political content because I just don't feel I'm motivated that way. You have to be motivated that way. I mean, it's all right for me to sit here and just say, okay, I'll、uh, or get up in the morning and say, I want to write a peace song. That wouldn't be right because, I mean, those kind of things you have to actually believe in. And it's not, I'm not saying that I don't believe in peace. I just don't feel that I'm, I don't personally feel I'm capable of writing peace messages and things like that because I'm not. In that sort of、uh, in, in that environment, I don't want to put myself in that environment. I'm into basically writing songs about what I feel about, and basically, what I feel very strongly about is love and emotion. And I think my, my solo album is filled with that in various different attitudes and ways. And that's about as far as I want to go. But I, I'm not a John Lennon who will sort of you know, go and you know, sleep and will actually act out his actual emotions, apart from writing songs, you know, peace with the world or whatever, and sleep in bags for I don't know how long, to actually go through that, because I'm not that way. And for me to actually go and write a, a peace message would be wrong, because I think it would be, people wouldn't relate, because suddenly they would say, if Freddie Mercury suddenly wants to write about peace, you have to sort of have a very sort of strong upbringing and a long sort of,、uh, you have to go through a certain amount of history of actually 
allowing people to accept the fact that, look, he does believe in what he's writing about. And as far as I'm concerned, I think, I hope people believe in the fact that I do go through torture and pain in terms of love or whatever. And that's what I'm, all I want to write about. It comes easy for me, and it's my, I think that's my natural gift. So that's all I want to do. あの今ジョン・デューマンの話が出たんですけど、えー、昔あなたはねジョン・デューマンのことをこの評価して、えー、彼は単にその音楽的な才能があるだけではなくて音楽的才能のように何か一つのマジックがあるというふうに言ってたんですねで自分はどうかというと音楽的才能は自分はあるとだけどもそのマジックがない分彼のようなカリスマにはなれないんだっていうことをおっしゃってたんですがそういう考え方っていうのは今の変わってないっていうことですか昔彼についてですそうです彼自身そうです You said that he had this magic which you did not quite possess. And well, I mean, I've never, well, to be honest, I would never like to put myself in any kind of parallel with John Lennon at all because he was just the greatest as far as I was concerned. So, I mean, that's that done with. I mean, you know, there's no way. I mean, but at the same time, I, I, were, I didn't exactly say that I didn't have. It's not a matter of less talent or more talent, it's just that certain people are. Capable of doing certain things better than somebody else. And I just feel that I'm not equipped to do certain things that John Lennon did. And I don't think anybody should, because John Lennon was just you know, unique and, and, and a one off. And、uh, that's the way it is. And I, I just、um, I admire John Lennon very much. And that's as far as I want to go. I just want to then think about myself and put myself across in the way that I want to think of. And in terms of peace messages, I'm not it. So I don't want to do it. あのまあ、何回も聞かれた質問だと思うんですけどね、えー、ジョン・デロンが殺されたときに、えー、どういうふうな感想を持ちましたか、um, what, how did you feel when you, you first heard that he, he was assassinated? Well, because I was shocked. You know, I was just、um, dumbfounded. And, and what do you do? I mean, it's just、um, something that you think will always happen to somebody. Or you, or whatever, and it just happened to somebody. I mean, it's just、uh, one of those things. What can you do? I'm、well, just shocked and disbelief. There was disbelief, and、um, life goes on. I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 結構生真面目なメッセージソングと言っていいのかなすごくその心情を正直に出した曲があったと思うんですよ、ジョン・デロンに関して。それをちょっとありましたかっていうことです。If I was pushed, I can write a message song. I mean, like, there are certain kinds of messages. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm totally, I haven't ever written a kind of message song, but it's not in, in, the, in the John Lennon idiom, if you know what I mean, in that trend. I mean, like, I mean, I've written some, a song called We're the Champions, which is a kind of a message song, but it, 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 it is not for world peace. It, it, it's more, it, it's in a different direction. But I mean, of course, I mean,、um, it's very true, the fact that when, when John Lennon sort of passed away. I mean,、uh, I wrote a song in tribute. It had nothing to do with it, anything、uh, to actually sort of, it wasn't for the people writing, it was for John. You know, it was for, from me to John. And basically, that, that's, so that has got, there's no parallel or any kind of distinction between what he did, what I did. It was just a, a song, a little gift, you know, because he passed away. But I mean, having said that, I mean, I, I, The nearest thing I, I can say to a message song is that things like on my, you know, on my solo album, I, I've written a song called There Must Be More to Life Than This. It, that's, it's not even a message, it, it's, it's as near as I want to go to talking about world politics or, or, or the sort of disasters that are happening in the world. I don't really write, I don't really like writing songs in that sphere, but there comes a time where I, I actually feel emotional in that way. And、um, so basically, it's just a very small part of what John and I did. I'm being very modest, but very true. I know, Pentohouse, no, I interviewed, so I'm going to read it. 
その中でねあのエルトン・ジョンとそれからロッド・シアートと彼はすごく親友だそうででそれで3人でバンドを作ろうかって話をしてねあの髪の毛と鼻と口というバンドを作ろうとしたって話があの出てきたんですけどそれは冗談でなかったんですか、uh, you read the, your interview with Penthouse. Penthouse. Yeah. And you're very good friends、uh, with Elton John and Rod Stewart.、Yeah. And、uh, you sort of、uh, forming this band called.、Uh, that was just tongue in cheek. At dinners, and、um, we just talk about that. And there was this one dinner where we、uh, actually had, and then we decided we maybe we should sort of sing together. But I don't think getting three people like us in a studio would be like, a, you know, like throwing a bomb somewhere, I mean, it would just explode. So it, it was tongue in cheek, and I don't, I don't think it'll ever happen. But I mean, it's nice to talk about it. You know? And when you're drunk, and, and you know, you've had a lot of wine, you, you talk about it and say, yes, let's do it. But the next day, you sort of be a sober and you think, I'm not going to sing with him. And it's vice versa. He's going to say, Elton's going to say, I'm not going to sing with Rod. And Rod says, I'm not going to sing with Freddie. And I say, I'm not going to sing with Elton. So there you go. But、um, if that ever comes about, I'll buy the record myself. I don't know, so she's not going to answer. But you're very close friends. We are, yes. We are. I mean, we're friends as, as far as that when we,、uh, when we meet up, we, we go out and we have a laugh, you know. Last time、um, we were in Los Angeles doing the Queen album, the works, and、uh, Ross Stewart happened to be in town. He just came in and we started jamming and we wrote songs t- together and things. Well, actually, we were just jamming and I had a song and I made him sing that song. And I think that song would still be, you know, could, could be worked out. But I mean, it was all done on the spur of the moment and,、uh, you know,、uh, there might be no time. The same way that David Bowie and Queen actually.、Um, Did a, a, du- a sort of duet together was the same way. I mean, we, he just happened to come into the studio and we were fooling around and then just sort of、um, jamming with, with, with tracks. And suddenly we said, Why don't we just、uh, see what we can do on the spur of the moment? And then that sort of actually progressed and sort of snowballed into actually becoming a fully fledged song. And so、uh, out came under pressure. So those things are very.、Um, You have to leave it. You can't plan those things. They just either just happen or they never will. Eh,、えー、to. When you're on stage or you're in, like, a member of Queen or you're, you're in Stardom and you're on private,、um, people would say,、uh, even when you're in private, people would say that, oh, Fred is like this because he's like, you know, he's a star and all that. And That's completely that, untrue. Does that, 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 that bother you very much? It doesn't bother me at all. I, I, I might, I'd like to feel that after all these years, I'm myself at every given point. When I'm on stage, that's Freddie Mercury. When I'm off stage, I'm Freddie Mercury. And that's the only way to be. I mean, I don't. The days have gone where I actually felt that when I was on stage, when I came off, I still had to sort of portray that Freddie Mercury image because of other people. I used to do that before because you have to grow up and you have to understand. You have to really come to grips with success. And over the years, I, I found out that you can become a very, very lonely person if you have to do that. And I'm not afraid. When I come off stage to actually be myself, which is, you know, it can be very, very boring and mundane. But most people, and in fact,、uh, quite a lot of people, when they meet me, they're quite、um, disillusioned. The fact that they, they expect me to actually just do what I do on stage. And I'm, I'm a human being, you know, and I'd, I'd like people to realize the fact that I'm a human being and that I can sort of react that way. And I have the same feelings and the same you know, kind of destructive qualities. I'm bad and good. Like everybody else. And、uh, I'd like people to think that、um, they should allow me that kind of freedom as well. So, I mean, I'm just、um, being me all the time. And at this moment in time, I like to sort of I like to feel that I'm just being my honest self and I don't give a shit about what other people say. Now, I'm going to say that 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 I
、そしてこの政治にいる自分を見たときに、あ、フレディ・マーキューってどういう人間なんだっていうふうに思っちゃった。Okay. Suppose that you were, you were differentiating yourself on stage and private. And when you're private and you see Freddie Mercury on stage, I love him. <laughs> What's your comment on No, I think that the way I, the way I look at myself, if I ever do, is that I'm a man of extremes. And to be honest, I think、um, I don't really analyze myself to that degree. But I mean, you always have a certain amount of an idea of what you're all about. And I think, I think my character. On stage is totally different to what I am off stage, as far as I'm concerned. And I think, I think every character is made up of a, a load of ingredients. And I just think I have a very soft side and a very hard side. But I will say one thing is that I think I am a man of extremes, but I don't, have any, I don't feel I have that much in the middle, which is I'm, you either get me where I'm very strong or I'm very soft. So if the right person gets me, they'll find me that I'm. I'm Very vulnerable, and I can be a real baby if, if they find me the right time. At the same time, I'm very strong and very hard. And there's no half measures with me. So that makes、uh, it can be very precarious and it can be very hard because, I mean, sometimes somebody can get you when you're very soft and they can tread all over you, which has happened a lot of times. But then sometimes people meet me and they're very hard. When I'm hard, I'm very strong. And nobody can get, nobody can get through to me. So it's a combination of both those. It's, I'm very soft and very up, and somehow that, that is my circulation. That's, that's what、oh, I'm made of. On stage? No, no, that's my whole life. On stage, I'm very, I'm very strong. Nobody can get me. That's when I'm very powerful. But when I'm off stage, I can be very soft. I can be very soft. But it depends on who is, is around. And, and I just open up all the doors, and then they find out I'm very, very soft, and they just trade all over me. I mean, So it's a combination of both. Well, what kind、Combined、of guy,、down. in just a few words, what kind of guy is Mr. Freddie Mercury on stage? On stage? I'm very powerful. On stage, I'm powerful. I'm a bad guy on stage. yeah. Is that all he asked you? You could have tried. You could have asked me that before. <laughs> I went through this whole damn thing. <laughs> that wasn't necessary. <laughs> well, there you are. You have it on tape.、Yeah. Use it. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quite a years, I've come to a lot of passion in terms of interviews. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I can just talk. Just the last question. I can talk. 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 Two whole years, 12 months to get、What's、to 40. Age, how is age related to rock and roll? Rock music? I don't know how other people do it, but in terms of where I'm concerned, I don't, I don't worry about my age at all because I know I look beautiful anyway. But having said that, it's, it's that I just don't worry about it. I mean, I, I just think that、um, sometimes a, age is a good quality because I mean, it, it, age means experience anyway. And I'm using all the experience that I've gathered all over the years to benefit by. And、um, to be honest, I don't worry about it because why should anybody worry about age? Because there's nothing you can do about it. You can't get younger. And as far as I'm concerned, I, mean, I just want to pack in as much of life and fun and, 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 and having a good time as much as I can within the years I have. So I'm not worried about getting younger or getting older. I just know that I just, I just want to live life to the full and spend it. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. There you are. Okay. Well, if you can't use that, I'll tell you. <laughs> I just said he's very privileged. <laughs> That's it. But I mean, as long as you get that, you get hold of it and send it out、that. everywhere. Because I mean, I just keep doing interviews and now I think, well, on video, whatever, you have enough. Wouldn't you say, I can't talk anymore? What other time? No, you can't, you can't. And、uh, suddenly you go from one to the other, and I think you'd make a good compilation. That's it. I read. Do you think our staff would get a couple of shots right now? Sure. Okay. I just moved out of the way. Oh!